Hey everyone, it's Brent Pasqua here with Joshua Winterswike. And the coronavirus has now become a complete household name. The global markets are in an absolute panic. We've seen tremendous drops in the market over the last two weeks. And as the government is trying to save the markets, they've decided to cut interest rates last week. And a question that a lot of people naturally start to have as interest rates start to fall is should we refinance your home? Now, Josh is fantastic in ans answering these questions. And so I want to get into helping you guys decide whether or not it actually makes sense. Josh, the first question I have is why does everybody really assume that right when interest rates drop that we should just run to our mortgage person and refinance our loan? I, I think a lot of it has to do with just the mortgage industry. I, I think that when rates drop, a lot of mortgage brokers and um, banks reach out to clients to refinance because there's an opportunity obviously for a sell. Um, and that starts to catch wind um, that lower interest rates uh, is the new climate and people want to take advantage. Um, but sometimes that's not always, you know, the, the best case scenario is to jump and refinance your home. Why, why do, when does it actually make sense for people to consider refinancing their home? Well, it, it's always a good idea when rates do drop, if the rates are lower than where you're currently at, um, to actually analyze and see if a refinance does make sense. So the first trigger event is that when rates go down, yes, let's, let's like, take a look at, um, to see if it actually benefits your situation. But um, it is a complicated process and there's a lot to actually analyze before you can actually make a really good decision on if you should refinance or not. One of the things I think that a lot of people do is they just look at it as a concept. Rates are falling. My rate is higher on my loan than what I can currently get in a new loan. So I should just automatically run to the lender and refinance my home. That's not correct then. Yeah, and a lot of times, the, before the rule of thumb was actually 2% lower than what your current loan was. It was kind of the rule of thumb of when you should refinance. And then just more, I think more recently, and as you know, the, the mortgage industry became more aggressive with the, the refinances, obviously because it makes them a lot of money. They said, well, if the rates are 1% lower than your current rate, let's do it. But sometimes, and Brent, we've seen it, where refinancing with less than 1% of a drop in, against your current rate sometimes doesn't always make sense. What should people do to actually find out when it does make sense? Because it sounds to me like this is more of a math question rather than just the general concept. Yeah, and I think the concept, you know, obviously you hear neighbors and friends say, you know, I, I'm refinancing my home and it kind of catches steam and it becomes more popular when rates drop. So you want to kind of be a part of that, that trend or you don't want to miss, miss that train um, if that opportunity does arise. But I think one of the first questions to ask yourself uh, if you're considering a mortgage refinance is really what is the goal of the refinance? Um, do you want to pay less in interest? Are you interested in increasing your cash flow? Do you need to consolidate debt? Um, and it could be all three of them, but when you can really sit down and say, this is what I want to accomplish, it's going to actually allow you to make a better decision when you start that process. And correct me if I'm wrong, but the reason why that, let's say you did a loan four years ago and rates are lower than when you did the loan four years ago. The reason why you just don't run to the lender and refinance is, right? A lot of times people are going to, they're trying to re refi back to a 30 year. So they've already paid down as much interest on that front end for the last four years. A lot of, there was a lot of interest that came out. So now you're starting your 30 year clock over again, plus you've got closing fees. All of these things tied doesn't just naturally mean that you're going to be in a better position. Sometimes there's that break even point. Is that correct? Yeah. Everyone's situation is so different. It does the, the start date of your original mortgage is very, very important. Um, because it'll help you analyze what that break-even point is. There are upfront costs with refinancing your mortgages. Whether you see them or not, um, they could be baked into the rate. They could be just disclosed all up front. And typically, we see them anywhere from about 2 to 3% of the amount of um, the refinance. So uh, you can see that this actually gets pretty costly. 
Um, and so with that being said, if there's upfront cost, there is a break even when you're gonna actually start making money. And then it also brings up another question of how long are you gonna actually be in the home? You know, do you have plans to stay in the home for the next 10 years? Because if your break even point is six, seven, eight years, and you don't plan to be there that long, does it really make that much sense to refinance and pay more of that upfront cost before you actually even realize that savings? I noticed that they keep talking about the feds possibly lowering rates again. Should people be holding off to see if that happens? Um, potentially, if not, I would say just now's your time to start inquiring and really um, do your due diligence, like we talked about, setting that goal, doing your research, running a break-even analysis, and potentially, yeah, rates can go a little bit lower. And if you want to kind of gamble on waiting or, you know, locking in your rate now, I think the first step is, though, is running that analysis on if it just makes sense for you. But we're seeing and in this slide that you just brought up that um, the week ending in, in March 6th, applications for refinances and mortgages were up almost 80 percent. I mean, that's a huge increase um, and probably I think the highest increase since April of of 2009. How, how are the feds lowering rates related to mortgage rates? Well, they're really correlated. So the interest rate for the 10 year treasury. So we'll just use the 10 year treasury as an example. When the Fed actually lowers rates, it's lowering the cost to borrow. And so it's effectively lowering the 10 year treasury rate as well. And the mortgage rates are really tied closely to that 10 year treasury. So not to get over complicated with it, but if you're looking for kind of an indication of if mortgage rates are going to change, the 10-year Treasury note, um, which is the you know the cost to buy a, a, or an interest payment for the 10-year um, Treasury, is a direct correlation to mortgage rates. What items should people start to gather so that they can start to calculate whether or not it makes sense for them to do a refinance right now, and and what what statement should they be pulling up? Yeah, so I would just start with your original mortgage statement and finding out when you started it as well, um, starting the mortgage. Um, and there's a lot of nice tools and calculators online that'll help you run that break-even analysis. Um, also, if you have an advisor, reach out to your advisor, very good at um, calculating that math equation. Um, and then incorporating that closing cost because the break-even analysis isn't just about the new loan and the new term. Uh, you have to incorporate that closing cost into that analysis or you're just not gonna get a, a good output or good data um, to make a, the best decision for you and your family. So if people do have questions regarding whether or not they should fi refinance, it, it could be good for them to reach out to you so that you can actually put the real data on paper so they can look at the numbers. Because to me, the numbers don't lie, right? So if the, it makes sense for you to refinance the home with the goals aligning with the numbers, then it makes sense. Sometimes people, you know, a lot of people who, who don't do this every day have trouble actually calculating that out. They don't know what to put in there. And that's completely understandable because this stuff is complicated. But you could do that for them then, I guess, right? Yeah, absolutely. There, there's tools um, that we use that are, help us achieve that, that equation and that, that output or that answer. Um, and we'll be able to tell, you know, is it really a cost savings? Um, does the cash flow really help your situation? Um, of a, you know, let's say an increase or decrease in cash flow. Um, consolidating debt, right? If so if you're combining um, debt um, to save money as well and interest, does that actually make sense for your, your scenario long term? So yeah, it's something that we help our clients with and we love to. And any decision that big, I think that consulting with an expert is just really important because look at, look at that example on the screen of the cost. I mean, on a $400,000 mortgage, you know, it can cost anywhere from eight to $12,000 to refinance your house. So, you know, that, that's not just a, a little bit of money. Um, that is a good amount of, of cost to this decision. So let's, you know, consult with an expert or just making sure you do your due diligence if, before you make that de decision to refinance your home. So how should people get a hold of you? Should they slide up in your DM or call you or email you? What's the best way to get in contact with you? Yeah, yeah. I, I'd say all of the above, just to make sure we get the answers. But um, email works great because then we can, you know, communicate. And if we need any statements, that's a really good way to communicate um, to getting these questions answered. And what's your email address? jwinterswike at rpawealth.com. You can also find it on our site, rpawealth.com. Well, thanks for the help with this. It's answering a lot of questions that I had and, and a lot of questions that people continue to ask me. 
I think the moral of the story is consult with somebody to do the numbers first before you actually make the decision to refinance your home because the numbers will tell you the answers and the answers may lie in yes or no to refinance. You don't want to pay more cost and more interest if you don't have to, if it doesn't make sense. Sometimes it just makes sense to add a little extra onto your monthly payment. It's a great way to cut down the terms of the loan. But I think in consulting first with an advisor, it, it helps tremendously. So thanks for joining us today, Joshua. Uh, we appreciate always the insight and the stuff. Thank you. Glad I could help.